Hi, so I came across this problem, uh, Goldilocks and the Three Bears, and uh, was trying to figure out what the moral of the story was. I have no idea why I was looking into Goldilocks and the moral of the story, but I know that all good stories, stories that have to deal with um, like classic tales, uh, we'll look at the definition of classic tales later on, but all good stories uh, that are classic tales have a really strong moral to it. So I wanted to figure out what it was. So I decided to uh, look into it, delve into this problem a little bit and take a look at uh, this problem. Uh, fun little problem. I'll tell you the story. Uh, and by the way, it's probably less than, uh, excuse me, less than 5% of the population of the United States actually knows this the moral more of the story less than one in twenty basically it's a very very uh intriguing moral and I actually googled it to see uh what the moral of Goldilocks was and, and when I looked up Google, the first ten got it totally wrong just to let you know so it's a very very uh extremely uh what do you call it? elusive story per se. I believe it's made by Grim Tales, so if you want to think about the story a little bit uh, before you actually get into the moral of it, that would be uh, you know to your advantage to try to figure it out. But first, uh, I would like to tell you the story, my version of it. There's many different versions of it. It really doesn't matter what version you use, so let me tell you my version first, okay? And first, there was uh, the three bears. Once upon a time, there was mama bears, uh, papa bears and a uh, baby bear and the ba three bears were having dinner and the porridge was too hot so they go out, go out for a walk and after they uh, go out for a walk Goldilocks comes inside and they try to figure out uh, uh, that she is really hungry so she has to figure out oh I'm, I want to try some porridge so she, she tries mom bear's porridge it's too hot pup bear's porridge is too cold and she tries baby bear porridge. Now, when I tell my students this story all the time, 95% of the time, it was, uh, my students would say, oh, it's just right. So she eats all of the porridge and then she gets really tired. She goes to the uh, living room and she's really tired. So she goes to the um, sofa, mama bear's uh, sofa is too big. Papa bear's sofa is too small. Baby bear's is just right. So. Uh, she snugs down on Baby Bear's uh, sofa, and then she gets really tired, she, so she decides to go upstairs to go to bed. Uh, she noticed that Mom Bear's bed is too hard, Pop Bear's is too soft, Baby Bear's is just right. So that's the story. And by the way, the ending of the story, is, it's my story. The bears come back uh, while she's sleeping, they eat her alive. So that's a little moral, uh, not moral, sorry, my version of the ending. So if you want to pause right now to figure out what the moral is, I want you to uh, tell yourself the story like three to five times. Maybe it might uh, come, maybe it might not. But anyways, so uh, I'll let you pause this for now and try to figure it out. A little pause for me too. Okay, so uh, have, have you guys thought about the moral of the story of uh, Goldilocks? Well, uh, I can tell you right away that uh, when I looked up uh, uh, in the web all these different morals, uh, they're pretty, I don't want to say nasty, but there would be like something like the moral of the reasoning which was the self-concerned preser preservation, transgressional, transgressive social, uh, rule-breaking, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I see a lot of uh, junk out there. And believe me, this is Google too, so uh, Google didn't actually get this right. Uh, the moral of the story is pretty simple. You said it three times, or I said it three times. Uh, it's not too cold, it's not too uh, hot, it is just right. And if uh, the story is about being just right, it must be pretty important. So that's the moral of the story, it's being just right. So what does that mean? Well. Uh, let's say, for instance, that you want to go to college. You don't want to go to a college that's too too hard, such as Harvard. You don't want to go to a college that's too easy. You want to find a, a college that's just right for you. 
um, let's say, for instance, that uh, when you graduate, you want to get a job. You don't want to get a job at um, McDonald's. I mean, there's nothing wrong with work, working at McDonald's sometimes, but something, you know, sometimes it might be uh, not right for you. Uh, you don't want to become president of the United States. Believe me, most people don't because it's a really, really difficult job. So you want to find a job that's just right for you. Uh, I'll give you another example. Um, you don't want to uh, marry a girl or guy, uh, whatever, that's uh, too pretty because, or too handsome because he or she will probably cheat on you. You don't want to marry a girl or guy that's too uh, ugly, sorry to say, because it's not that hopefully you'll cheat on him or her, but rather that because you'll have ugly kids. No offense. So you want to find a, uh, a person, your mate, that's just right for you. Um, give you some other examples. Uh, when you study, you don't want to study too much. You don't want to study too little. You want to have just the right amount of learning. So it's a balance. And I actually use this moral quite a bit on the SAT and ACT as well. Because sometimes when they give you the answer, they give it to you from a uh, very small, 5, 10, 15, 20, and then 30. So if this is your answer, um, and uh, 15 seems to be too small, then 5 might be just right. It's a type of tactic that I use. Uh, and it helps with the students to kind of evaluate what's going on with the numbers and how to use the numbers to make sense. So Goldilocks is a tactic that we use, and we use, I use it quite a bit, uh, just to give you one of the tactics of SAT and ACT. Uh, where else is it used? Um, it's actually used in what's called Goldilocks Planet. If you want to look it up in Wikipedia, uh, G O L D I L O C. Uh, Goldilocks Planet. And actually, this is, they got it right in Wikipedia. Uh, the Goldilocks Planet is a, a very good story about how they're trying to find a planet that's just right for habitation. Uh, it's not too far from the sun. It's not too cold. It doesn't have too fast of a spin. It doesn't have too slow of a spin. It's moving just about at the right orbit as well. So they're always trying to find planets that might be feasible for, feasible for other life. So there you have it. That's the more the uh, story of Goldilocks. So um, try to figure out some of your own story. I, and the reason why it's called a classic because all classic stories stand the test of time. If a story is a really bad story, it will not stand the test of time. So I know that the Grimm brothers, uh, they made some really good stories, and this one is definitely one of them. Well, good luck with your SAT, ACT, and um, happy hunting. Bye.